2000, uh, in 2013, the two presidents have met finally after Ram Mustafa case, and it was considered to be culture's diplomatic success. Where are por both parties are right now? Are they going to start over, or they they are continuing some conversation that has has been left out? Well, Arthak, first of all, let me thank you for the interview. It's a pleasure to to talk to you and. And it was also a pleasure a little bit earlier to talk to uh, a number of Armenians who have participated in people-to-people -people programs that can build a foundation of trust and understanding between the two countries. There are people in Azerbaijan and people in Armenia that really do want to find a way forward to peace. I know you're one of them. And I respect that very much, and I look forward to continuing these people-to-people -people programs. Uh, but you're right. November 19th in Vienna, the two presidents met for the first time in several years. And uh, they, they did have a very constructive discussion. They came out of the meeting uh, believing that they could find a way to respect each other's red lines and find a way towards a peaceful settlement. No, that's not easy. And I think the people of Armenia and Azerbaijan know it's not uh, easy. So we're continuing uh, discussions. I'm just back from uh, Baku. I'm meeting with the president here this afternoon. And we'll discuss the, some of the difficult issues and the way forward. And we'll try to find a way, because the people of Azerbaijan and the people of Armenia uh, deserve to see this conflict resolved and deserve lasting peace. So is it ma modern principles that they are continuing to talk about? Is it somehow uh, the matching point in Kazan that they, they were ready to sign something? Or uh, you are starting over with the blank page? No, I, I think what we're doing is we're focusing on the most important and most difficult uh, issues and seeing where the common ground lies and respecting each side's differences and trying to find a solution that is not a compromise but is actually a situation where both sides can come out and say that this is good for the people of Armenia and the people of Azerbaijan. So as with any negotiation, we don't want to see winners or losers. We want everyone to be a winner and we're talking through these issues uh, we're working directly through the MINS group, and uh, you know, I am a co-chair. But we'd also, uh, any way that the United States itself can be helpful in, in bringing about a uh, peaceful settlement, we would like to be helpful. On one hand, there is a, a diplomatic effort to, uh, to solve the, the problem, Karabakh problem. Uh, on the other hand, uh, at the same time, there's a ceasefire on border. And if we are looking back uh, four or five years ago, there, there were only accidents of this. Now it's the constant shooting from both sides. What are we going to do about it? Well, the ceasefire is very fragile. Uh, the good news is, is that after the November 19th summit, we saw the number of incidents uh, along the line of contact and also along the Armenian-Azerbaijan border drop dramatically. And that was a good sign. Um, more recently, there has been renewed tension, and we're concerned about that. The tension can undermine our ability to find a lasting solution. So the Minsk Group and the United States, we've called uh, on all parties to refrain from further violence and respect the ceasefire, and we hope that that will, uh, that will take place. But that said, everyone understands this is a very fragile ceasefire. And uh, what we want to avoid is any uh, escalation that could be uh, damaging and, as we've seen, can result in uh, injuries and loss of life uh, along the line of contact, and no one wants that. And our understanding is that uh, Azerbaijani doesn't want or doesn't listen to you. In what respect? Uh, we, are, we are actively engaged with all the parties. We meet with them regularly. We want to find a way uh, forward. Uh, of course, there has to be the political will on all sides in order to find uh, a, a solution. And we will continue to work to find a way forward on peaceful re resolution of the conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, some experts 
Armenian expert says that there is a tendency that uh, before and during the important meetings, for example, Hillary Clinton's visit to Armenia or to Prime Minister meeting in Paris uh, this, uh, uh, this January, they're always shooting on the border. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Azerbaijani wants to escalate the situation or it just somehow is, uh, uh, we don't get what the Azer uh, Azerbaijan w wants to to prove? Well, I don't know whether, you know, the timing of these uh, incidents, I think... We thought that it's just coincidence <coughs> that now we see that this is a, a, just a planned timing. Well, I think that w at any time, the ceasefire needs to be uh, respected, whether there's a visit to the region or, or, or not. This is an issue that we've raised in Baku and that we'll also raise in Yerevan, that uh, we do not want to see an escalation of, of, of hostilities. Uh, and we'll work towards that. What we really want to see is, is uh, a lasting peace. Uh, so, do you think there is a chance to build a trust, a security measure across the border because there was some offer that constantly are rejecting by Azerbaijan? So, uh, is there any chance to do, to do something, for example, take off snipers from the border or something like that? Well, one of the issues that, that, that we hope both sides will pursue are security confidence building measures and people-to-people -people programs. We've seen this uh, ourselves and we've talked about uh, how important it is to develop uh, trust and understanding on both sides of the border and we need to find more programs. We need to work on those, the, those issues. I believe that the people of Armenia and Azerbaijan want peace and want a lasting peace. As I said yesterday, Nagorno-Karabakh is an anchor weighing down both Armenia and Azerbaijan. And we want to remove that anchor and we want to see an era of prosperity uh, for the region. And that can happen if we can find a peace in Nagorno-Karabakh. And an important part of that is confidence building and people-to-people -people dialogue. So the first part has failed, the confidence building. Am I right? Well, with all of these issues, we need to continue to, uh, to work on them. Uh, there's no silver bullet. It's not going to be easy to find a, a, a settlement. What we need to do is to be persistent. The time is now. There, as I said uh, yesterday in Baku, I said there is a window of opportunity for peace now. If not now, when? And we need to pursue that. We need to pursue it actively. The people of Armenia and Azerbaijan should demand nothing less than, than, than peace. And we see that we do have an opportunity. Elections have passed. Both presidents have renewed mandates. Uh, the United States is intent on being actively involved in trying to be, bring about a peaceful settlement. Is there the political will? Is there the will among uh, the presidents? And is there the will among the people to find a lasting peace? And, and my, I, my commitment to you is we'll work as hard as we, we can, but we can't do it alone. If it's possible, which answer did you get from Baku? On what? Uh, uh, about your, 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 uh, your offer to use this chance of uh, window to, to settle down. The I believe that Azerbaijan wants to engage actively in finding a way forward. That's why we're traveling to Baku. If Baku wants me back tomorrow if the president of, of Azerbaijan or the president of Armenia wants to have this dialogue, we're ready. We're ready to help mediate and facilitate uh, that uh, dialogue. And whether that means a meeting of the presidents again or foreign ministers, um, we're ready to help facilitate that. It's not easy. Look, for 20 years there have been efforts to find a solution for uh, Nagorno-Karabakh and a real, durable, lasting settlement. Uh, now is the time for us to redouble our efforts and to find a way uh, forward on, uh, on this. And I'm ready. And my question in Baku and my question in Yerevan is, are you ready? Uh, maybe it's not politically correct question, but uh, in your opinion, uh, uh, do you think Baku wants another war? No. 
uh, I believe neither Baku nor Yerevan wants to see a war. It was devastating. As I've talked to people who lived through that period of, uh, of history, it resulted in a, a, a horrible loss of life. Uh, and both countries have uh, suffered the consequences of war. No one wants to see war again. That's the worst outcome. But this current situation, neither war nor peace, the status quo, is not sustainable. And to avoid more war, we need to find a way towards a lasting uh, uh, settlement. And uh, the direct answer to your question is no, Azerbaijan does not want war. And I believe here, the people of Armenia, the president of Armenia, does not want war. Uh, in some of his public uh, uh, speeches, uh, Ilham Aliyev said that he wants to change the format of OIC Minsk Group and engage Turkey. What is your um, position on that? In fact, both sides uh, have said that, that they want to continue to work through the current format, to work with the co-chairs to find a solution. And uh, uh, I've seen no uh, evidence to the contrary. Of course, uh, the United States and the co-chairs listen to all parties, uh, but the format, I, I believe, is one that is acceptable in both Yerevan and Baku, and we continue to, to uh, remain committed to working uh, through the Minsk group to, to, to mediate and to find a settlement. During your meeting uh, with these uh, participants, you said that at the beginning of your this job, you thought that it would be easier than you thought. Uh, what is the different part of uh, of being co-chairman? <laughs> well, I said that with regard to to track two programs. Uh, I thought that that there would be a strong interest in both capitals for both security confidence building measures and more people-to-people -people programs. But in fact, these are very difficult programs to undertake. Uh, I would like to see, and I, I, I'd like to, to work uh, more with you, with your counterparts uh, in Baku, to find how we can undertake more people-to-people -people, uh, programs. You know, I, I hear unhelpful rhetoric. I see ri a rise in tensions uh, along the line of contact in the Armenia and Azerbaijan border. And uh, I don't think that that's helpful. If we want to find a lasting peace, we need to have this underpinned by trust between Azerbaijanis and Armenians. And the way to do that is more, is more people to people programs, more security confidence building measures, and I hope that there will be support for that from the people of Armenia and Azerbaijan. Uh, last statement of uh, Minsk, uh, Minsk Group and also Andrzej Kasparczyk had made a statement yesterday in Baku that for the escalation on the border, both parties are guilty uh, equally. Do you think, uh, and because a lot of the escalation comes from Armenia, don't you think that this kind of statement encourage Azerbaijan to continue to escalate? the border accidents? Well, we want to dis discourage any, any escalation. Uh, sometimes it's very hard to know how an incident begins. Unfortunately, there is not accurate reporting information. Uh, we need to rely on the sides to report on incidents, uh, and they do regularly to the OSCE. So it's sometimes very hard to know how an incident takes place. What we do know is that there have been deaths and injuries on, on both sides. Uh, of course we respect, we regret any incident that happens along the border and especially if it results in the loss of life and that's why we need to work to reinforce the, uh, the ceasefire. At some point uh, Karabakh will join the negotiation. When this will be possible? Do you well, to we're committed to listening to all parties. I've traveled now uh, to Nagorno-Karabakh on several occasions. I've met with the president and foreign minister. I've met with representatives of civil society there. I want to keep the channels of communication uh, open because uh, w all parties need to be heard from in, in this. And, and I look forward to returning to Nagorno-Karabakh 
to continue to, to, to hear and also to do some outreach uh, as well. I've, I've been talking ab uh, about people-to-people -people programs. Uh, they're uh, important uh, in Nagorno-Karabakh as, as well, and I hope that there will be, uh, we will be able to work on programs that build uh, trust and conf confidence, including among the people who live in Nagorno-Karabakh today. We are a Twitter user. How is it mm -hmm. to tweet about such a sensitive case such as Karabakh? Well, I thank you for mentioning Twitter, and I, I hope that uh, your 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 viewers will uh, will follow me. Well, I, I'm your follower. Thank you. <laughs> I, um, uh, I I want to be open and transparent uh, about what we are doing on track one and track track two. Uh, there are some things uh, that uh, take place, of course, with the presidents and and foreign ministers that need to remain in confidence. But in general, the people of Armenia and Azerbaijan, the people who are directly affected by this conflict, deserve to hear more. And I'd like to find ways to be more transparent about what's happening. I believe that the more that people understand and the more transparent the process is, the more the people of Azerbaijan and Armenia are going to, are going to seek peace. So correct me if I'm wrong, that you are saying that both parties agreed to continue negotiations and they are ready for breakthrough for this year. Is that correct or this is kind of your wish, not the, not the president's? Uh, it's very difficult to put a timetable uh, on this. Um, the foreign ministers have met regularly. The presidents met in Vienna in, in November. There is a dialogue uh, underway. Now, we're hopeful that this can lead towards real peace negotiations, and that's what we need. We need to get into such uh, negotiations that can result uh, in a settlement. Uh, and I'm, I'm hopeful that that can be done. Look, I wouldn't be here uh, in Yerevan today meeting with the president if I didn't believe that, that peace is possible. Uh, similarly, yesterday with, uh, with, the, with, with the President, the United States is committed to finding a way forward uh, on this. And we believe that it is possible to do this. If there's the political will uh, among the political leadership, if there's uh, the desire among the people of Armenia and Azerbaijan to find peace, we'll find it. All right. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, Artek. All right.